Hello everyone and welcome to this week's scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to require a file in order to run a script. A lot of times people want to have a FFX or some kind of preset file included with their script and they want it to be required in order to run your script. So we're gonna be making a simple script that only runs when there's a certain file we define right next to it in the folder. In this case, we have this test image.png, uh, which we're gonna be checking for and if we say remove that image, we will no longer be able to run our script as you can see. The required file is not detected, so this will allow you to basically require a file, a folder, multiple files, or a certain folder structure in order to actually execute your script for users. And this will help alleviate headaches of them missing certain resources or missing the copy and paste instructions you give them, or simply to add a layer of security. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel, and down in the description you can check out this code in the GitHub link, make sure you follow us there for coding updates, and you can also follow us in the description on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, UXP plugins, submit tutorial ideas, hang out with our knowledgeable members, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP and get cool perks like code in advance, weekly live streams, and much more. And you can also support me on AE Scripts, link in the description, where you can check out some of my free and paid plugins to help improve your workflows. Alright, so the main goal today is to simply write a simple script that, again, allows us to force the user to have a certain file in a location. So I'm going to be using Extend Script today just to uh, have a bit of nostalgia. It is a new year but we are going to use an old program today. So we're gonna start by creating a simple main function. This is something we're going to execute the very first time we run the script, and this is going to be need. And then we need to go ahead and define main, so we'll have a function called main. Uh, now if we were to simply put anything inside of here, like alert hello, and then run this, it's going to run because we're simply saying run the function called main, and here's our function called main. Before we run anything in our script, let's go ahead and create our UI. This is going to be defined globally so that we can have access to it no matter what function we're in. So I'll first create a window, say new window. It's going to be a palette type window. We'll call it my script and the sizing will be undefined. And then we want everything in the window to go from top to bottom. So we'll say window dot orientation is equal to a column. Then, like in the example, we just had some example text and an example button. So I'll create some text and I'll create a button. Our text is going to be equal to our window. We're going to add some static text, undefined size, and we'll just say some sample text. And then for our button, we'll say window.add a button, undefined size, and we'll just say start. And then now we have basically our UI defined, but nothing is showing yet. If we wanted to show something inside of our main function, we could maybe change this to say window.center and then window.show. That way when we run it, it's going to first define our interface, then run this main function, which says, hey, grab that window, center it in the middle of the screen and show it. But now we want to go ahead and do a file check and make sure that we have a certain file located either in the same folder as the script or in a similar file structure. How do we do that? Well, first we need to save our script because there's a built-in global function or property which allows us to get the whole path to our currently running script. But you can't do that if you have just a unsaved script. So the first thing we need to do is save it. I'll go ahead and just call this test.jsx to keep it nice and simple. Um, now I'm going to comment out my window.center and window.show and inside of here in our main, I'm going to say alert uh, dollar sign dot file name in camel casing. You could also use um, actually a right line, which I'll go ahead and do here. Say right line, which is an extend script feature. And when we run this, you can see we're going to get uh, documents, GitHub, require file to run script, test.jsx. This gives us our, our path to our entire script, and we can basically take that path and cut out the JSX part, which we know is our script, 
and then add whatever file extension we want. And since we want to use this image or require this image.png, all we have to do is add that to the end of this uh, bit of text right here and we just need to remove the test.jsx so let's go ahead and create a variable called uh, file path and we'll set this equal to dollar sign dot file name now again because this is the entire path plus the file name we need to get everything but the file name there are a few ways to do this, but the easiest is to typically find the last slash and cut it off there. You can also subtract, you know, the length of the file name, but that can be arbitrary. And if the user changes the length of that, uh, if they change the, the file name, then it won't work the same. So uh, we need to basically say file path is equal to file path. And we're going to slice it up. The first part we're going to slice from is going to be the very beginning. So zero. The part we're going to stop the slice on is the very last time we see this slash. So I'm going to say slice it from zero to file path dot last index of slash. And if there is a slash like this in our string, it's going to find the very last index of it and cut it there. So now if we go ahead and do another right line, file path. Let's see what it looks like after we've done this slice operation. As you can see, now we've cut off our slash and test.jsx. Now all we have to do to complete the path to this image.png, which is located in the same folder, is to add uh, onto the very end here after parentheses, we need to add back in our slash and say image.png. And now file path will refer to image.png in this location. Now it may be that they don't have this installed in that location. And that's now where we can check if this file actually exists. The way we're going to do that is by saying if file path that exists, do something. Otherwise, do something else. We can also invert this logic and say if our file path exists, this is checking if it's true. We can invert it by saying, does this file not exist? If that's the case, we know that uh, they need to install or move that image folder or image file. So we can say no uh, image.png file detect. And then we can say return false, which will quit out of this main function. So now if I go ahead and run this, uh, it says no image.png file detected. But that is actually incorrect. So it is telling me it does not exist. I know it exists, but we're checking if this path exists as a file object. We need to encircle our actual string of the path in a file object. You can't check if a string exists. You can check if a file exists. So now we should have no problem and get no alerts. If I was to say uh, change the name real quick to image2 instead of image, you can see no image.png file was detected. So now we would need to go ahead and change the name back. And in the else statement, we can now put in window.show and window.center. You can also send this off to another function if you want. But if we go ahead and save and run this, you can see our script is now running because image.png is located. Again, if I remove image.png or change the name of it, we're going to get an error that says no image.png file was detected. You could tell them to you know, copy it or do whatever. Um, and this is also just going to provide another layer of security if you have some users that don't know how to install it properly or are trying to hack around your setup. So just to reiterate, all you have to do is use the path to your script file that you're actually running. And from there, you can either check if there's a subfolder that requires some images or a single file in the same root folder as your script that requires is required to run it. And uh, if it doesn't exist, tell them that, uh, sorry, it wasn't detected, return false. Otherwise, if it's found to, ex to be an existing uh, element or file, you can show your script or go into a separate function in order to allow them to have some specific functionality. And you can go any level of depth with this. You can just check for one file. You could check for an entire hierarchy of files. It's really up to you and your project.
But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out this code in the GitHub link. Follow us there for coding updates. And in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member in the Discord server, make sure you come and join our awesome community where you can get help with scripting, extensions, Premiere plugins, UXP plugins. Uh, basically have awesome discussions, get all your questions answered and uh, discuss all kinds of Adobe add-on stuff. And of course, if you want to become a YouTube member and help support us financially, link for that is in the description. You can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, and VIP. These all come with different levels of perks like VIP streams and much more. And also check out some of my stuff on AE Scripts. Link for that also in the description. I have some name your own price and paid stuff that will help improve your workflow and visuals. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.